Hello everyone, I'm Leila uh, from Radakat, uh, based in New Zealand, Auckland. I'm going to talk about Azure Data Breaks. What is Azure Data Break and how we can use, use it for different scenarios. So as you can see here, the Azure Data Breaks is actually the drive innovation and increase productivity. It's able to unify the process and it allow you to integrate different data resources and apply different data transformation and the scales without limits you can target any size of the data and is already secure and protected by the azure active directory security and the control control base uh, this is a kind of the architecture and kind of the process that we can have in azure data breaks as you see it can be used for data scientists data engineering business people and it's able to access to different database like data lake store data warehouse and the other and there is a possibility to integrate it with some other application like cognitive services power vi and stream analytics and the other so what is the main reason of using azure data breaks uh, the first one is doing ETL. so yes we can do uh, ETL process extracts, transform, and load the data using data breaks. The second one is for streaming the data from any sensors using Event Hub or IoT Hub. And the third one is for machine learning, connecting to the cognitive services or using R or Python for machine learning purpose. Let's look at the portal together. So here I'm in my Microsoft uh, portal. I'm able to write here data breaks. If you just search, you will see we have Azure data breaks, create one and is asked about that. So I'm said that Azure data breaks test. And I'm using the existing one. I'm based in Australia, New Zealand. So I use the Southwest. For the pricing, I use a standard. Uh, if you want to connect to Power BI, uh, you need to create a pricing type premium. But for now, I just want to show to you I'm creating one. So I'm just wait till it's creating a new data breaks for me. So as you see, that is so easy. So uh, Azure uh, data breaks already exist, uh, but the con connection and the combination and having that in Azure is happening in uh, February 2018. So from that time, we actually have access to Azure data breaks. Azure data breaks is based on Spark. So it's run on a Spark server. And so that's why that there is a possibility to run different data source i created already one so let me show you the actually the one that already created so this is the environment that you get here as you see you're able to click on launch workspace so it's open another window for you that actually you will be happy so i'm just click on that and then you should come up with this area so here we have different component this is the uh, kind of the introduction to that, the home, and also we have workspace, we have recent uh, notebook that we work, data, cluster, and jobs, and the other. So what is cluster? To create a, any uh, form in Azure Data Breaks, you need to create a new cluster. When you create a new cluster, is actually you have possibility to specify what version of the Spark you are going to use, what Python version, uh, the driver type you're able to choose, and the other. So for the doing any, creating any notebook and any area in uh, Azure Databricks, you need to create a cluster here. So after you create a cluster, now you're able to go to the workspace. In workspace, if you click on the top, you're able to create a notebook. That is the main place to write in the code. So I'm create a notebook. I call it test. And as you see, we have different options of language here. We have Python, we have Scala, we have SQL, and we have R language. It doesn't mean that we, you couldn't write any other language there, but the main theme of that notebook would be that. So I choose R. I'm really fan of R 
and here I'm choose the cluster that I want to run. So I just have one. I choose that one and I'm create a workspace. So as you see here is a place that you can write your code. Here it just shows that it is all. Let me run a very simple code here on R. Let me just write. So I'm going to use a library ggplot2 and in library ggplot2 uh, actually there is a data set name mpg to display that one i use the command display mpg so it's very simple i'm going to write to show a data set here uh, there is an option to run the code so i click on that is run this cell for me as you see it's going to connect it to the spark I'm able to create the other editor for that. So you see here, when I'm hover my mouse on the cell, I am able to see a plus sign that's mentioned insert in your cell. You can add cell in up or you know on the top or bottom of any cell. And you're able to mention that to, to run just current cell, to run all the cell above, or to run all the cell below of here. So this is a really simple data set. That's a data set about car, uh, the manufacturer of the car, the speed in the city, speed in highway. There is a good thing here that you're able to show the chart, the, uh, show the different charts. So for example, I'm interested to see the histogram for the highway. And I think that I just need the... Uh, value for the highway so I just want to see the data distribution by highway so I'm able to see that here or I'm thinking okay now I want to see the relationship between the speed in the city and speed in the highway so I now I have a, a kind of a scatter chart so it, there's a possibility or I want to see in a table Format. So we have some visualization possibility, but however, you're able to write your own visualization using R or Python. Let me show you some example here uh, that actually we can run. So I'm going to create a new cell. I'm going to use the same chart, the same, sorry, database mpg and i'm going to just show a very simple chart here hope it doesn't get any error yeah so i'm create a, uh, a scatter chart using r so if you know python you can write python and any other language there is a good things about here you're able to create the schedule you're able to schedule your process here so you can double click here and specify all of the cells run every you specify to identify the frequency every week every day or month and what time and based on what time zone it should be run so that's actually a really good point of that so you're able to schedule to run automatically every of this and uh, here imagine uh, that i want to kind of uh, write other codes codes in other language for example i hope that i have the code right i'm going to write scala language so if i if the main theme of that notebook is for example r or python or any other one and you want to write other language so for example here the main team the main dominant language is r but i want to write a scalar language i need to use this format and i paste my code so this code is actually what's going to do is going to connect to my azure data uh, lake store fetch some data from there and showing here so i'm using scalar language to connect to my azure sql uh, data uh, sorry azure data lake store so as you see here i have application id i get authentication id these are can be fetched from active directory in another uh, show i will in another video i will show very precisely that how you can do that and i'm get actually there was a data set named titanic I get the data, I'm select a specific column using a scalar language, 
and I change the name of the column from sex to gender and yeah so this is all about that and I'm able to display that one so I just close the schedule and I run that However, I I have I fetch the data using the scalar. Okay, so I for example I find data transformation is really easy with scalar. So I'm going to actually uh kind of uh, transfer it using the 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 R on that. So there is a possibility to do that here. So this is a very few introduction on what is the uh what is R, what is uh well, how we can use Azure Data Breaks there. And in the next video, I will show you that how you can do machine learning inside data breaks.